One, two. I got a letter this week from a guy called Ben. It was sent to my gym of all places. Ben must have seen me go to the gym in a video a couple of weeks ago and decided to write me a letter and send it to my gym. Little bit weird. I mean, it's not like you have the ability to comment under every single video that we produce or anything. Is it, Ben? I'm only joking, mate. I'm, I'm jesting with you. It's fine. I don't mind. I, I, can't res I quite respect it in a way that you've embraced the this weird, archaic Victorian communication technique. The first thing I noticed about Ben's letter was just the size of the fonts, man. The size of the font. They're, they're substantial fonts. You've gone for a very big font there, Ben. You need to get that down, mate. Considerably down. Nobody likes a man who who overdoes it on the font size. I am going to quickly do my five minute journal because I'm feeling a little bit hectic today, mentally, and just feeling a bit like, um, I don't know, like I've got a bit of a racing mind today. So I'm gonna have a little journal and then it'll be time for my little Zoom with um, my yoga teacher. Dear Steph, he spelt my name with a PH. There's a lot I can forgive in this world there really is i'm quite a laissez-faire chill but you know kick back relaxed guy let it be is my is my mantra let it be but you spell my name with a ph i want to set fire to your back also i'm going to see if i can finish this later on today i got right to the end i've literally got like that much to go and I'm just finding the end bit just a bit of a slog do you ever do that when you read a book you really like like the first two thirds of it and then at the end I'm like you should have made this shorter you should have cut this down because the end bit just feels like I'm like I'm not really sure where this is going now or what they're doing with it I'm just finding it a bit boring almost so I don't know whether to carry on and finish it or whether to start something new. And I'm having a bit of a dilemma with that because I'm like, no, my brain's like, you need to finish it. Um, you never finish anything, you need to complete it. And then, but my mind is just like, well, actually it's just a waste of time if you're not enjoying it. So start something else. So the thing is when you write a letter, you normally start off with a few benign pleasantries, just things, you know, the tedious stuff that you don't really need, but it just kind of sets the stage. Ben's a man that likes to go straight in. There's no uh, dim lighting. There's no simply red playlist playing. There's no whispers of size. Doesn't really bother me that much. There's no romance. Pippi. You're always getting into trouble in here, Mrs. Dear Steph with a PH. If you look up diazepam, you'll see it's not an antidepressant. It's an addictive benzodiazepine for anxiety and muscle spasms. Wow. I love how you can spell benzodiazepines, but you can't spell my fucking name. Sorry. Let it go. Let it go. Ben must be referring to uh, a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago in the videos where I talked about having diazepam as a backup. Uh, I got prescribed it after my dad died in January, and I, I have it there in my toolbox just in case everything else fails and I just need something to get me through the grief. And I talked about it and I said, I don't want to take these. So I'm going to do everything I can not to. And I ended up not taking them. Haven't touched them. Haven't touched them. I see antidepressants as like a nuclear option. If everything else just doesn't work, you've ran, you've you've tried new things, you've met friends, you've done all that kind of jazz. Inside this little working, box nothing's here touching it. Bang, you've got those there as a backup. The last resort. The oh, it's uh, diazepam so or, or antidepressants. You're speaking to a lot of people. I will only ever take antidepressants. I'm talking about meds. I agree with you, Ben. I completely agree. I'm an assistant pharmacist and know how difficult it is for people to come off benzodiazepines. Take care, Ben. This letter depressed me, but not in a way that you might think it would. The first thing I thought when I read it was content. I almost instantly thought that I could use this letter as some sweet content. Which makes me no better than Jake Paul. Oh my god, we actually love you. I love you. Yes, yes, let's do it. 
Jake Paul is out here in Italy. You know what I'm saying? I'm essentially a poor man's Jake Paul. Time for a podcast session. You ready to chat to your wife? Hey, look, I've got Bluebird, Bluebird on in the background like a massive professional. Why? Because it makes me feel smart and like I know what I'm doing. Like oh my I'm God, it's doing. so hot in here, I can't cope. As you can probably tell, I'm feeling a little bit self-critical this week. I bet Jake Paul never feels self-critical. I bet he never wrestles with his own nihilistic identity over viewing the world through a deterministic lens. He just says things like send it and gets paid millions of pounds to punch people. Yeah! Oh! Oh! Andy, bro. Andy, bro. I guess, in a way, he is a modern day gladiator. People come from all over to watch him battle. That's what a gladiator does. He's a gladiator. And I... I'm a man who considers himself to be a poor man's Jake Paul, who also considers Jake Paul to be a gladiator. My internal critic is loving that. It's dancing around like Rumpelstiltskin. He's a gladiator from LA, and I'm a dad from Bath who gets sent letters in massive fonts. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, if you were to say to me, Steph, do you want me to drag that inner self-critic out onto the street and put a bullet in his head? I would say no. I need him. I need him. I even quite like him in a obsequious sort of way. Yeah, I do. I like him. I need him. Because he's the little person. I say he. Could be a she. Sexually ambiguous, to be honest. It. Let's just go with he. He likes to berate me a lot and criticise everything I do and call me awful all the time. Um, and my job is to try not to give that voice an angle of attack. <laughs> Make it hard for him to hate me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I'm sorry that... No, I'm not sorry. It's scaled back. It's raw. It's honest. That's what it should be. That's what I committed to, Steph. This is what it's supposed to be. Ben, I hope you don't mind me reading out your letter. I know what you're trying to do. Dissuade people from taking Ben's ideas because they're very hard to get off. I get it. They, they, are, they should only be a very last resort. I get it. I understand. I, I agree 100%. Just... In future, maybe write it in the comments rather than hunt me down like Columbo. <sighs> and reduce your font size, mate, because, I mean, nobody should go that big. Unless you're writing to your nan who has learning problems. You're learning, your nan with learning problems. That's the only excuse you have to write a letter with a font size that large is to a nan with learning difficulties. right anyway that's me hope you enjoyed this week's video take care and i'll see you next week more fun next week way more fun i'm doing loads of stuff you know what i'm doing next week i'm taking your hydrofoiling yeah babes going right down south to do it trying it out for a couple of hours I'm gonna do that it's gonna be so much fun it's not gonna be just some mopey old 40 year old complaining about somebody who sent him a letter in font sizes too big and referring to jake ball as a gladiator it's not what you come here for let's face it I know. I'll work on it. I'll get it better. I'll pull it back. Peace, love, and harmony to all. Take care. See you soon.